So for me, this image is whimsical and lighthearted and utterly naive of aesthetic uh, vocabulary. Um, and it has no agenda. And that's why it is perhaps my favorite of the 20. It is the first picture that I had published. And it's probably the last picture I took uh, on film. Um, and then I went off to college. and. Um, changed directions and went into theater and this is the opposite it's very heavy uh, and weighted with formal education and uh, ideas and it's also um, grabbing your attention to tell you what a big set it is the other aspect of photographing theater is choosing um, images before you've gone into rehearsals for a production this is a photo shoot for um, a show when the photo shoot is in a, an abandoned pool in my neighborhood or the neighborhood i was living in in brooklyn um, Oh, sorry. Um, I needed to learn more about photography, so I took a class with a, a gentleman named Joe Sinnott, who is also the staff photographer for Channel 13 um, WNYC. And he taught me things like um, how to shoot an image that serves a, a nonprofit, like a woman from Pfizer wants name recognition with 13. And I ended up going into um, nonprofit, shooting a lot of education programs, and this is uh, some images of women learning film. And in particular, um, I was proud of this work because I, I have encountered sexism in, in directing in it, and I wanted to be part of putting forward positive images. Um, another program uh, at the Museum of the Moving Image was the Pinewood Dialogues. Um, and I ended up shooting quite a lot of filmmakers talking about their work. Um, the one on the left is pretty typical, and on the right, the more interesting images that you can get. Um, so over the course of um, my career, I ended up shooting um, both the Pinewood Dialogues uh, series for Apple Store, and I noticed these patterns um, of hand gestures and um, uh, certain challenges of like not getting the uh, speaker eating the microphone. Um, I ended up um, shooting this is a pre-production shot or publicity shot for um, Long Wharf Theater. It took about 20 hours to prepare for a 20 minute shoot, um, including finding the diner that he could walk to. Um, and in continuing in the nonprofit, again, it's wanting to convey the scale of the event and how impressive it is so that you will buy your thousand dollar ticket. The image in the corner is what Joe would call napkin duty, um, like close-ups of the tables. Um, I ended up then working in on Fashion Week. Um, this is a backstage shot um, and one of my favorite things about Fashion Week is is this theatrical background. You see a model coming in and a photographer while the lights are still going up. And part of covering it is doing both the backstage, getting ready, as well as the runway. And, you know, I shot a lot of runway and close-ups of shoes and celebrities in the audience. And the one that ran was the designer's daughter walking down. Um, and part of that was the captioning, was finding the designer and getting the daughter's name. Um, and it, again, it was one of those moments that really surprised me about what ends up running. Um, this is also backstage, and it's a stage manager prepping a model to go on, but for me it was the Grim Reaper, and I realized that some of my own themes are kind of coming through in these odd places. And this is what it actually looked like in the pit. Um, you can see Canon is well represented, um, and there's, I was probably one of two female photographers there. Um, you also notice um, that they all have flash brackets because if you don't have a flash bracket and you lift your elbow, it's considered incredibly rude. Um, and this was pretty mild compared to what it would be like on the red carpet. Um, I have a lot of celebrity shots, but this one kind of represented how I felt about shooting um, celebrities. Um, De Niro doesn't like being photographed, and at this time I felt like in the bell jar, where, if you, where did I slowly go crazy and what am I doing? And at that point, I uh, talked to my editor and said I want to do more local events, meaning Brooklyn. I knew the headline for this would be Amanda Palmer raised $1 million on Kickstarter. And I thought it would be the fabulous party she threw with, she had a balloon dress and 
razor blades popping it off and party with her new husband, Neil Gaiman, and I thought those were the busy, outrageous images, and it was the simple one. The pool I showed you at the beginning reopened, and again, I thought maybe it would be this aerial shot, and you won't believe this, but this little 12-year-old girl beat the council member um, who goes to the gym every day, and that's sort of how these orchestrated photo ops happen. This was during Hurricane Sandy, a uh, Staten Island cop drowned and, or yeah, drowned in his house. And there were thousands and thousands of cops and there was no way to capture it. And uh, you know, and so this was a little bit of my effort of those rank, you're trying to get the formality and this is um, Occupy Wall Street. And the point I wanted to make with this was was you can see, sort of see how close that photographer is. This happened at 8 a.m. and by the action in the evening at 5, um, they're completely under control. And this is a mile from here. Um, on the industrial yards, it's behind my studio. I'm pretty lazy and I just go out and shoot this stuff. Um, and it kind of indicates where I'm going now with my, uh, my, my personal work in photography. The building is all vis visual artists, painters, and, and, um, and I started to work in abstraction. And for me, it's whimsical and lighthearted, and it doesn't have an agenda, and it's very freeing.